Hey guys, it is Nick back with the Decampers and I'm super excited about this video because what we're doing is we're going to upgrade the RV stereo and the ceiling mounted speakers. Okay, so this little junky thing is so junky. It's like, um, has like a DVD player and stuff like that. Um, but it's just so crap that sometimes features just disappear. Like being able to adjust the audio. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Same with the Bluetooth. And then those junky little speakers there. I mean, it doesn't matter how quiet you really have the music. You just hear like popping and cracking and rattling so we're upgrading to a dual din a pioneer avh 120 bt and it has bluetooth it has usb aux 50 watts by four uh two pre out so if we wanted to put an amplifier or anything like that on there uh what is a seven band equalizer and some kind of steering wheel control ready thing, which this is an RV, so we won't be using that. Um, now, a challenge that I'm going to run into putting this in is it is a dual DIN, which means it's double the size of an ordinary car stereo. This looks dual DIN, but actually I'm pretty sure behind it's going to be just a single DIN. It's not going to be as big as this face. So I will have to alter the opening. So tune in and see how that works. And then for the speakers, we just kind of went at little cheapies. Um, the main reason is uh, the Pioneer speakers we looked at, the magnet on the back is really big. And in your, um, in your ceiling, I guess you could say attic space, it's not very deep. So if we went with a nicer speaker, it would have a big battery and it, the speaker itself would be so deep it may not really fit in the ceiling so a good friend of ours vicky and paul they have our same exact rig so we got a hold of them and they told us uh, exactly what the measurement of our speakers were they ran out and measured theirs and it's an oddball it's four uh four three quarter inch to five inch so i got this just in case I need to increase the size of the hole in the ceilings for the new speakers just a little bit. Uh, the speakers we got are 5.25 inch, so pretty positive I will have to widen the opening just a little bit. And then, to help me deal with that opening, I got this little handheld saw. Um, you can see there's a seam and a seam here. So I believe it's not going to be as bad as I might think, but I'm probably going to have to come down that seam a bit and cut across. I'm a little nervous about that, but um, I'll just take my time. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is just the speakers. Um, I'm going to first put the speakers in and just see how, like for you guys, if you want to upgrade your, your uh, RV ceiling speaker stereo system we're just going to put a little bit better speakers in it at first and see if they sound better with the factory fury on head unit so um let me put my tape measure down so let's take one of these bad boys out you know most of the screws in the rv use that little square head these do but you can also use a phillips on these I'm also curious to see just how deep our little attic space is. And I'm also curious, is this a grill or is it part of the speaker? And it's all part of the speaker. Look how, to, God, there's so much sawdust. Let me unhook this guy. Look how tiny that little that little magnet is. Goodness, it's really clamped. Oh my gosh, super clamped. Okay. 
Okay, look at that teeny tiny little magnet. These are like the crappiest little speakers in the world. And let's see how big our hole is. Okay, we're gonna have to increase this by half an inch because the hole opening is four inches, three quarters. So I'm gonna have to increase it a quarter inch all the way around. So that will be my next step. And then let's see here. Oh, there's actually quite a bit of space, you guys. From the ceiling to the, to all the way up into the ceiling, it's exactly four inches, but I wouldn't put a speaker that big. I think I would be comfortable with a speaker that is three and a half inches deep, more like three inches deep. Okay, y'all, so let's compare the original crappy little junky speaker compared to the new ones. Right away, I really want a white grill. I was hoping this was separate, but it's not. It's all one unit. I really don't like the look of this. Um, but I think later what I'll do is I will probably spray paint this white and get some white uh, speaker fabric to stretch over that. Um, so anyways, so let's see the little speaker. To me, even though the box says it's 5.25 inches, the speaker itself looks the same size, but look at the difference in those magnets so we're going to get a lot better sound out of this speaker and also the holes are lining up to fit so let's go over here here's where i took one out i'm not going to have to make the hole in the ceiling any bigger the screws are lining up perfect so let's spin back over here so if you guys want to do this, and I think these speakers were $30 for two. We just picked them up, up uh, at Walmart. And uh, yeah, so here's what we went with. If you guys want to get some, this would be a 20 minute job if all you wanted to do is switch these out. So let me mount a new speaker and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, as I'm putting the speaker and I want to show you something. See the, the screw holes way over here on the edge? This one's like right on the edge and split the wood. This one's right on the edge too. Well, the new speakers come with these little brackets and on the back side of them, they'll let your screw grip into the metal. So I can use them on two of these holes, but these other two are so far that I can't, but I think it's gonna be just fine. Also, these speakers didn't come with new screws, so we're just going to have to use the original white screws, which I'm fine with. Alrighty, there's one installed, and we actually, in the box, did find that it did come with new screws. So, um, time to uh, put the other three in real quick. Okay, y'all, so check this out. There's that Furion stereo, and like I was saying, it's more of a normal car stereo-sized hole. And I got all my good wiring and everything all pulled out, ready to wire in the new stereos equipment, but it's not gonna work. Let me tell you why. I have never seen an aftermarket stereo that doesn't come with a metal cage that you put in your hole. You mount the metal cage, then you're able to slide the stereo into it and it locks in place. And then generally you'll have some kind of little bezel trim that goes around. Okay, well this, comes with no way to mount into any of these any of these screw holes so I have no way to uh, actually mount it I've never seen a stereo that doesn't have the little metal cage you know you've heard of like if you you know you have to use like these little key things you stick into a factory stereo or aftermarket stereo to unlock them well that's unlocking from a little cage so no cage here this area gives you no way to actually mount it in. It suggests using whatever mounts are factory in the dash of your car, and then you screw through that into here. Well, how are you even going to reach that if it's already in the dash of the car? So, very disappointing. We have to send this thing back. And uh, 
I think we're just gonna stick with the old crappy old Furion, at least for now. So, and then if you want to take this job on, you can't just put a regular car stereo in here because the Furion puts holes here. So I was going to cut across to make a double den hole for a larger stereo. So keep that in mind. You don't want to just go a normal size stereo if you want to do this. You're going to want to double den and cut that. But make sure it's a stereo with the mounting cage. So now I've got all this mess. And I'm just going to have to put it all back. But we did test the speakers to the factory stereo before I started pulling it out. And it does sound a lot better, huh, David? Yeah, it's a big improvement. So it, you can go as and it's not. Uh, you're not going to be wrong for doing that. Yeah, you're not going to be wrong for upgrading your speakers. Yeah. There and is, keep, and just keep it to the Fury on if you don't want to go through the trouble of changing out the head units. Yeah. So yeah, the speakers big difference. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that almost concludes. I think we'll like uh, show you guys or give you guys an example of how it sounds with the new speakers. Okay. Now let me put all this crap back together. Guys, the cookies turned out fantastic. I love baking in the camper. The other thing that turned out perfect are the new speakers. Let me tell you. This was for four speakers, a $60 upgrade. The sound quality is blew my expectations out of the water right David pretty good look at how comfortable David is y'all I've been down here playing with the dogs that's why I'm down here yeah David's all playing with the puppies okay so what volume level do you think the music was acceptable with the old speakers uh 10 15 at the max 60 decibels and below. Oh, decibels. We're talking volume numbers on this head unit. Okay, probably about a five. Okay. <laughs> David said about a five was acceptable with the original speakers because they would start like clipping and just rattling and sounding terrible. So right now, we're at 10. To me, was the absolute max before it really just sounded like blown out paper speakers which is exactly what they were so now I'm gonna be quiet and I'm gonna turn it up So now let's push it even higher and just see. City sidewalk, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. Yeah. There's a feeling of Christmas. I think I'm gonna go 30. I haven't gone this high. We're just gonna see. Oh, I'm already at 30. Let's go 35. Okay, so I'm going to turn it down. We're going to turn it on down so you can hear me. Okay, when I took it to 35, serious distortion, right, David? Uh, the speakers could have been damaged. Yeah, the speakers, we could have blown the speakers at 35. Now you're talking, you're working with 50, is it amps or watts? Watts. 50 watts per channel. A channel is per speaker. This has four channels. Compared to the old ones, those were like having um, headphones hanging in the ceiling and trying to listen to that. These I can actually jam. Now, is it like audiophile, surround sound, theater quality? No. But we were going for good enough just to tolerate listening to and these little speakers far exceeded those expectations. I'm so happy with it, but here is a thing that I noticed when I was attempting to change the head unit. So you know how like a car stereo, 
Um, it sounds a little different in the front than it does the back seat. Most cars are have a little more bass in the back seat than they do in the front. So I guess Keystone slash Fury, Furion, to avoid that sound, to avoid like the front of your trailer sound like the front seat, and back here at the sofa sounding like a bassy rear seat. I gotta turn this down a little bit more. Um, so what they did was instead of wiring each speaker to its own channel, they split it. So all four speakers are running on only two channels instead of four. So there is no like front seat, back seat. They wired everything to like driver's door, passenger door kind of thing. So we're getting half the power to these speakers. So what I'm thinking about doing, and I'm going to switch it to kind of try to... So what I'm talking about front seat, that'd be front seat. This would be back seat. So if they wired it the way the stereo says to wire, this would be kind of like bassy like your back seat. That'd be more like treble and voices like in the front seat of a car. So what I'm going to do is rewire it to where that speaker and that speaker are front seat that speaker and that speaker are back seat because my thoughts are if you're standing around those two speakers you're going to get the full sound and it's going to be the same as these two back here and if you're in between these two it's going to sound the same so i don't think you'll notice this like front seat back seat difference we'll get more power to each speaker and it ought to sound even better than it does now you guys so um yeah uh these little speakers walmart 30 bucks for two of them the screw holes matched up i didn't have to adjust the size of the opening and the ceiling they're working out pretty good i i'm really happy with it i don't even think we're gonna bother with going and buying another head unit i think we're just gonna stick with the little fury on because this is all we really need. It's great. It's working out. So, if your RV ceiling speakers, stereo sounds like crap, leave the little stereo alone. Just go replace the speakers. 60 bucks plus tax altogether. We're super happy with it. So, um, anyways, there's another RV upgrade video for you guys. It's been a little while on an upgrade. And this is one that we've been waiting to do and well deserved. And we're super happy with it. So give us the like, give us the subscribe, uh, DeCampers OK on Instagram, DeCampers, DeCampers on Facebook. Give us those comments. You guys know if you've commented, I always respond. Till next time, happy camping and happy holidays.